It's been a long-awaited celebration, but with a snip of the ceremonial ribbon, the Freedom Courtyard is now open in Rancho Cucamonga. The Freedom Courtyard can be best described as a place where local residents can sit and reflect about the great men and women of the military who have served and are currently serving across the globe. But more than just being another war memorial, the courtyard's unique monuments highlight each branch of the military, along with honoring the family members who are sometimes forgotten for their equal sacrifice. Needless to say, the unveiling of this special place of reflection evoked quite an emotional response. It's truly uh, something that, that uh, chokes me up, just the emotions of all of the participants and all the Gold Star families that are here, and especially the people, uh, just as importantly, that have lost loved ones back all the way to World War II, that have purchased bricks, made donations and contributions in memory of their loved ones. Uh, it's, a, it's a day of, of one of the finest days in Rancho Cucamonga's history, as far as I'm concerned. It's just a beautiful, glorious day. One of the key factors for the Freedom Courtyard is the fact that the undertaking was initiated by private community groups who helped raise the needed funding for its creation. Though the courtyard is on city grounds in Central Park, no taxpayer money was used during its development and construction. Diana Lee is one of the key players who helped team up with others in Rancho to help bring the dream of the Freedom Courtyard into a reality. Yes, I mean, it was literally people in the community said, we need to have a place to honor our veterans and our military and their families for them to come and be able to congregate. And we just said, you know, hey, these are hard economic times, but you know what? This is for the veterans and the military, and we can make this happen. And it was, it was just spontaneous, and the support was just it, it, contagious. Oh, absolutely. It was a community effort. It was, uh, it's all nonprofit, all donated services, um, all volunteers, and, uh, and not funded by the city. So it's, it's a wonderful community effort. At the conclusion of a very well-attended dedication ceremony, members of the community began to flood the courtyard to get an up-close look at this special place and to begin their time of honoring the loved ones of their life who have faithfully served our country. Well, being from an immigrant family as everybody, but my son is, my husband was from Germany and um, loved this country, became a citizen, and my mother was from Mexico. It just means so much to um, be just part of the American fabric. With its open architecture, the Freedom Courtyard is available for the community to visit during daytime hours at Central Park seven days a week. And with a city that has long taken great pride in its sons and daughters who serve our country, you can expect to see many who will take the time to visit and spend time in reflection. From Central Park, this is J.R. Ibarra for Healthy RC. It's been a long-awaited return for Southern California race fans to catch the sights and sounds of IndyCars at the Auto Club Speedway in Fontana. IndyCar! Not since 2005 has the IZOD IndyCar Series raced at this very fast two-mile oval. But the patience of many Indy racing fans was fully paid off with the running of the MAV TV 500. This thrilling event had its share of excitement and drama throughout a warm summer evening. With the return of the series to Fontana, both key drivers and car owners were more than happy to get back to a Southern California oval track. Well, fantastic on several fronts. I mean, I grew up in uh, Silmar, San Fernando Valley, and then Long Beach before I moved to Vegas 18 years ago, and a lot of friends, a lot of family. It's kind of my home turf. And uh, secondly, it's, it's where we need to be. LA is a huge market. Uh, even though we have Long Beach in April, uh, uh, this is a great place for our sponsors. and. You know, uh, so many great battles here over the years. Championship contender Will Power of Team Penske was quite impressed with the racetrack and was looking to have this event capture a brand new set of race fans. Well, hopefully we get a big crowd here and, you know, start getting people back. That's, uh, that's I think that's the main, main thing we need to do with the series, you know, because it is great racing, it's a great product, great drivers and teams, and, um, you know, I think it's, it's you know, some of the best motorsports to watch. With only 17 points separating power and his closest contender, Ryan Hunter Ray, the race had a true significance in settling the 2012 IZOD IndyCar Championship. But Power's night would be cut short after hitting the wall in turn one and ending his bid for a title. 
Ryan Hunter Ray would just barely squeak by in points for the championship, while fellow American driver Ed Carpenter would capture the race after a hard fought battle with Dario Franchitti. In the end, Series CEO Randy Bernard was quite pleased with the weekend's event. Very pleased. It was great to see everything turn out the way it did. Chevy win the manufacturer, Ryan Hunter Ray win. It all these fans come out in this heat, it's, you can't ask for a better weekend. While the celebration for the race and championship went deep into the warm Southern California evening, race fans were also basking in the recent news that this very successful event will be on the calendar for the 2013 season. Bringing you the best of California. From the Auto Club Speedway in Fontana, this is J.R. Ibarra for California Life.